Good afternoon, everyone. What can I say? Happy Christmas from the Earth Lodge. Um, I'd like to welcome you in to one of the places I think is close to being the best, one of the best places on planet Earth today. And I built it. Let me show you around quickly. In my Earth Lodge, I have many things that um, have reference to people that walked the earth many thousands of years ago, probably in a much more wholesome way than we do today. But I use this place not only as a personal retreat, but I use it as a place to bring people where they can come and attend my courses and learn some skills and things that um, were important ways that you could understand yourself and fit in amongst nature and have what I would describe as um, a fulfilling and a worthwhile journey with your time on planet earth and so firstly for want of a better phrase, cheers. I might have only recently cropped up on your newsfeed, or you might be a supporter um, and know um, of more of what I do here, why I'm here, and uh, how I come to teach prehistoric crafts and um, enjoy my life in the 21st century in a, in a mixed up way really, partly with one foot in the Stone Age and one foot in the modern world. But, excuse me, just have another sip of this because it really does taste good. And remember what we're doing here, which is to wish you a happy Christmas and a happy new year. And possibly to fill you in on some of the blanks, which means that um, let's keep things real. It is the 21st century and there's a lot going on in the world. Things that, that are beyond all of our control. And my little company has survived through the COVID, through all the crises. I've survived and um, we're still here to go on. And that doesn't have to be a battle, but it has to be um, in an intelligent and uh, a creative way. I love being creative and I love the skills that I have and the crafts that I enjoy and bring to the surface for people to learn from and um, understand ourselves from a long, long time ago, basically. So in just a minute, I'm going to get stuck into this rock. <laughs> but just prior to doing that, I need to cover off something. I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you to um, you guys. You're, you're my subscribers and you're my followers and you watch my videos and you comment and quite often what happens there is you communicate among each other and some of you have become actually lifelong friends not only to me but to each other and we've managed somehow to create a community um i love that that is a positive element to social media as far as i'm concerned and um, some people will never get the opportunity to come here but they feel like they're here because i don't have to sell you a workshop to teach you something sometimes you can do it f from the sofa you know you can look and you can get some involvement in uh, my style of life so Just from me on that level, 
you're following, I hope you continue to do. Um, and I need you to grow. And the reason I need you to grow is because this permits me to leave my little earth lodge and go around the world on my Stone Age adventures, which I have a great passion for. And the reason I do that is because I get an opportunity to take you to far flung areas of the earth where you might not otherwise ever a get to even get to know about or b get to experience and c understand how it connects people and us with our journey here so um that's important and because you're following me what that also um means is that I this isn't a fantasy and it's a reality and I'm able to afford to do this um and and I did mention you know about economic crises but and they have affected me but with a little bit of careful you know navigation I'm coming through and I've got a good bit of land to work from this is solid i've got a good place and a good lady um and i've got the support and of, of friends who come down and help me on some of my courses that i run um some of you you know i will um speak out sarah day greg ling josh dan richard um, who am I forgetting? Uh, Anna and Dawn, people and, and Maud, my lady, you know, people who have come and they've become intrinsic in what I'm doing. And um, cheers to you guys, you know, because you make it extra special for people when they come here. If it was just me, I'd be overrun and I couldn't operate in the way that I do. So let's just drop the camera down a little bit because um we'll open up an uh, an empire in this stone maybe something will happen that's useful maybe it won't because i've i don't know all i know is this is a bit of a wild landscape down here um and while i carry on doing that um i'll carry on telling you a bit of a story oh and cheers once again yeah <laughs> it's christmas after all So how do, the hell do you make sense out of a shape like that? Well, in the first place, what I'd like to tell you is it doesn't actually matter what happens. Because if I don't hit it, nothing's going to happen anyway. So kind of like in a flint napping way of thinking, we just set about it. And I'm going to set about it up here. Um, and that could work out terribly. <laughs> this is a quartzite rock hit it there well it broke and we open the door into the world of stone and I'm going to turn it over because now all said and done I've just made sense of something you see this area here that gives me an opportunity to have a conversation with this rock in a slightly more intelligent way than whacking around on all this sort of stuff, you know? So off we go. Well, that was bad news because it just broke my hammer stone. That's probably down to the fact that I've chose a slightly too small hammer stone. But the wonderful thing about flint napping is it doesn't have to be perfect. What we have there is we have a little crystal and that's known as a brachiopod. And the brachiopod is something that um, was living on the ocean during the Cretaceous period many thousands of years ago. Just the same way as they do now, but within the coral reef system. And it's left as in situ inside the flint as a little fossil. And flint mapping can be huge amounts of fun just because of that 
just riddling around to change my hammer stone a bit. <clears throat> so in and out of this, what we're going to do, see, in certain respects, we, we potentially don't need to hit the flint anymore. What we have is we have a perfectly serviceable knife that could be sensibly held by the back and it's got an awesome cutting edge along here. But that'd be the end of the story. It's slightly too quick. So we'll just keep moving on into this for a little while. There's um, a crack which is running uh, diagonally, directly down into the stone. That can mean that, well, that might mean that that whole piece ends up breaking off. Um, but that's flint napping, you know. So, um, over this year, I've um, had quite a lot of things that have happened. And um, in a pretty good way. So, for example, prior to this year, I'd never run something called a, um, a, an Enchanted Woodland Banquet. It was an idea where people would come here they try out the art of flint napping, um, all sorts of things, whatever whatever they felt like doing for an afternoon, and then get fed like kings. God. I knew the shape was going to be a bit of a challenge, but you know what? Anyway, that's been a roaring success. Most of the banquets have been full. People have come, they've spent a day with us. They've uh, got to know each other. They've fed like kings and queens. Um, and not just on stuff that you buy, not, not actually not at all on anything that you buy at a shop, but the kind of things that grow on the land, wild animals, which um, have been harvested with love and respect. Um, they've been hunted professionally no suffering has happened but more importantly see that is just beautiful but more importantly quick camera up for this moment actually when I was a boy and I grew up on the ancient flint mine of Grimes Graves my parents, um, John and Val Lord, they we had a we had a house in the forest, half a mile from a Neolithic flint mine, and once a year, my mum and dad would throw a big banquet with a big venison being cooked, ale under the trees. On that note, something called an elephant tent, which was full of cheese, wines, um, hams. Um, things to celebrate yourself and in, and recognise that there is a bounty of consuming the pleasures and the wonders of being on this earth, and the, and it was a pretty much a flock of about fifty people to start off with. Thirteen years later, there was about two hundred people would camp. They would spend their year navigating to come to one of the, our um, Grimes Graves festivals. Nobody was charged, they were all friends. It was one of the things that my parents did instead of taking us away on holiday. They brought friends together. And so, and this is not a sales pitch on a banquet. This is a celebration of the fact that 30 years later, I'm continuing in the footsteps of my parents and bringing people together in a way where they make friends, they do things they never knew they could do. They sleep in the forest. They sit around a fire laughing, joking, dancing. And um, it's an echo of a time from A, my childhood, but B, more importantly, of ancient times. There was once a time where celebration was 
a foundation. And it must have been hard to find celebration when you lived one uh, just at one on this earth. But they did it. And we could find a way to trust that once again, maybe. Um, I'm, I'm on the journey with that and I'm not doing too bad. Cheers. So, let's have another look down and see what the hell's going on with this rock. I'm getting access. Whoops. I'm getting access from about here all the way around. And it looks like hell and high water at the moment, particularly when you look at things like this. But you know what? I have a rock, that one. And if I hit it in the right places, make strong manoeuvres, then this may continue to possibly become a flint tool. And also, back at my home where I live now, um, a lot of people ask me if I live here all the time. I spend a lot of time here. But I also have a home um, where I can run my business from and have a little bit of family life too. Um, and in a shed I have my trike, which is going to take me and you on the adventures that I planned a couple of years ago. Will Lord's Prehistoric Adventures. And... If you don't know about them, then I think you should drop on over to, if, you, if you're not currently watching from my YouTube channel, drop on over to it and look at the playlist called Will's Prehistoric Adventures and you'll see exactly what I'm on about. Because I run a version of myself which isn't all about um, making a living, it's about loving life. And it's about actually going through life in a powerful way and, and being fulfilled. Um, I'm not um, one of these people that uh, want to convince you that the government is trying to um, ruin your life or anything like that. A conspiracy theorist. But... It's very easy not to be empowered and just get consumed with day-to-day -day shit. Stuff which doesn't matter, just, but just make sure that everybody else gets paid. We're not here just to pay people. We're here on planet Earth in the 21st century to have an extraordinary adventure. And... Um, grow and develop as souls and um, that's one of the things I'm trying to reconnect for some of my viewers and also myself is a way to walk this planet as the great um, you know as if there was a God they intended they didn't intend us to be slaves to just help other people get rich and all that sort of shit. There's a bigger picture. And I think ancient people were probably highly connected to that. Well. That got deep all of a sudden, didn't it? Sorry. <laughs> anyway, things are progressing. I've managed to extract everything from this rock that wasn't um, part of the outsides of the rock. And what that means is that now I understand what I can do with this because I've 
uh, I now recognise what's in front of me. Um, meaning that it might not have wanted to do anything at all. I might have hit it and it, it could have fell into a thousand pieces. But I chose it. I chose it from a perspective where I, I've been looking at flints for a long time. So I kind of, even though it was a pretty dodgy shape, I felt it was going to be good inside. It is. So there should be an axe on board. So we'll drop this back down and we'll carry on with where we're going. So as I was mentioning, um, I love having you followers along. And I do try to come at it, this all from a perspective where we maintain a positive mindset. Because I think it's very easy just to fall into negativity. And believe the worst and not go for the best. And some people have come up to me over the years and they've said, because of you, I decided I was going to go for my dream. Because you told me it was going to be all right to have a dream. And, and since that time, um, I've got myself a camper van. I've been going on amazing journeys. I've... Uh, been doing what I wanted and I've been doing the things I was always told I could never have because I couldn't afford and I know that that is a bit of a privilege for some and the reason being is because you might be caring for people and you might be caring for them because you're a lovely person and uh, that stops you getting on with your journey and caring's the most important thing to do. Well, do you know what? That's a creditable, that's a highly credited attribute to your personality. And for that, you always thank yourself anyway. So, but for some of the others, you know, it's down to the fact that life teaches you you can't be what you want to be. I beg to differ otherwise. I think I'm an example of it. Like I said, we live in a complicated, complex, diverse world with lots of things going on. Oi! Gotta make these count. This is just a beautiful bit of stone. I'm loving it. Get out there. You see what I'm saying? It's got a few problems, but then so do most stones. I'll probably screw it up, but there you go. Now the interesting thing is, is that uh, when I started looking for my dream, there was a bit of a problem, because I didn't, I didn't know what it was, I didn't have one really. I was on a journey so the dream became a manifestation of that journey um, and what I did is I straddled things together and made it into an awesome journey <laughs> um, I can't tell you how to find a dream all I can tell you is that you're the only person that can actually make your dream come true um, because if you don't, no one else is going to do it for you. You have to look at 
find it and then say to yourself, that's what I'm going to do. And to hell with what anybody else wants. You have to do it because you're only here once and you might as well do it. You know, that's if I could give you a Christmas present, it would be for you to take a tiny little key to your dream and say, fuck it. I'm opening it. I'm going for it. So. In January of next year, I don't have clients. What I have is I have a period of time where I shall start planning the next part of my footprint into the extension of my dream. Because you can't just have a dream, go and get it, and then that's that. These things have to go on. And you have to make one bit connect to the next bit. So I do have a plan. And one element of the plan for me next January is to work on the dream. But also, I need to construct a few things. I need a new pair of trousers. And I want to make a reindeer skin coat. Some of you already know that from watching some of my movies. And I will do that many, many, many hours. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to film it. And I'm going to share that journey with you guys. So you can see some of the painstaking hours that will go into the construction of a pair of deer skin trousers and a deer skin coat. I've already made a start on the stitching, the cordage, and uh, just to stitch everything together. And I have some of the skins floating in wood ash at the moment in preparation. Oops. In preparation for me taking them onto the next level, which we call tanning. That's if life as we know it doesn't get in the way. But that's my current plan. And this is looking like it might end up becoming quite a nice axe. One of the people I forgot to mention, and I will mention right now, is my good friend Scott, Scott Knight. He's a carver and a grinder. And I'm going to have a high suspicion that this axe will go on to Scott, who's another man who also decided to go after his dreams, run his own business instead of working on a farm. And um, now he lives in an honest way, not just honest in as much as he pays all his bills, but honest to his soul. Because he chose the he chose to make a career path out of his passion that he's bloody good at. Um, and one of the elements of that, I was waiting for that little crack to open up. You know, you might think, oh, it just broke. It didn't. It just helped. And um, but anyway, I'll probably get in touch with him and get him to grind this. Where it will end up. This axe, the axe that was made while talking about dreams, I have no idea. But I would suggest that one of the wonderful things that could happen to it, if it even happens, this, could, this is a risky business I'm going through now because it could be the axe of broken dreams, but... And, all said and done, let's be honest, 
promises are promises, dreams are dreams. And not everything works out. But that doesn't mean you don't still keep going for them. Never stop dreaming. Never stop enjoying rainbows. And don't let the bastards grind you down. It might just be the art of true empowerment. I had an honest dad, who I'm lucky enough to still have. He's in his 80s. And when I was a kid, he used to say to me, watch out, boy, or they'll brainwash you. I think he was talking about the model of the perfect, well-behaved human. And um, I never forgot him telling me that. And on this account, on my account, I failed. I didn't get brainwashed. I deviated from my path many times when I became disillusioned. But I didn't get brainwashed. And so currently I'm living the best version of my truth. But I know. I'm living exactly how I want to live. My way. Because I love it. And in that, I see a lot of people joining. Being happy. And accelerating in their good selves. To be what they want to be <laughs> so I wanted to give you a Christmas video with a bit of cheer in it, and you can say, well, bloody hell, where's the cheer? Well. It's got a few lumps and bumps on it, which I'll iron out a bit, because that'd be unfair to expect Scott to grind them out. Um... But the cheer is, I cannot give every single one of you a gift because I've got quite a big following and I'm thankful for that. But what I can do is I can share the internal workings of my brain, which tells you, you're wonderful, you're special, you're included on this journey. Pick your dreams up, find your key, start it up, say fuck it and be happy so um from me to you that's my gift it's the employment of your dreams happy christmas my good friends and i will see you in the new year cheers for following don't forget if you want to see the uh, playlists get yourselves over to youtube if you're not already there Get subscribing, um, help make my success happen, because that would be a nice dream to have all of you over there, right? So that you get to know when I'm making movies. They're all put into folders for you, so you can watch what you want and get it organised. Cheers. <laughs>